All right, hello again out there in remote learning land. We started our new topic, minerals, uh, the other day, and of course, uh, we're going to keep going with that. The other day, we talked about uh, what makes something a mineral. Uh, today, we're going to talk about how to identify them, uh, which is pretty cool, because if you can figure out uh, what a mineral is, you would know if it's worth a lot, right? Um, <clears throat> so anyways, uh, there are several tests uh, we can go through. Some of them have some pretty funny names, uh, but anyway... Uh, We'll go through the tests uh, for those that are, uh... oh, let's get going, crank it up. Okay, so you can see we have a uh, shiny uh, mineral here. It looks like gold, but we don't know. Is it? Is it not? You got to do the tests. Uh, these are some of the tools for the tests. Glass plate, porcelain plate, bottle of acid, magnifying lens, a nail, and a penny. Yeah, you use uh, simple things to identify minerals. And, of course, there's another sample over there, a nice, pretty, shiny thing. Is that worth a lot of money? Well, let's find out. All right, so here we go. Uh, identifying minerals. Describe two observations about the following minerals. What do these all have in common? Uh, hopefully you said they're all pretty shiny looking, right? They all kind of uh, reflect a lot of light. Uh, and, yes, uh, that is a big, uh, a big thing there. Also, they're all in uh, many different colors, as you can see, all right? And those are two uh, properties to identify minerals. So here we go. Uh, we'll start out with color. It's the easiest uh, test to do, although it is usually the least reliable because many minerals can be the same color or one mineral can have many different colors. So it really isn't the best way to identify them. Uh, it's useful to narrow it down after you've done several other tests sometimes, Okay. Uh, halite and calcite, for example, right? They look like the same exact color, so color wouldn't be great for that. Quartz has many different colors, so it really wouldn't be great for that. But pyrite only has one color, right? So for pyrite, it is helpful. Uh, so it depends on the mineral, all right? Uh, pyrite, by the way, is fool's gold, so don't be fooled. You better do the other tests, okay? All right, then there's luster, right? How it reflects the light. We just chatted about that a second ago. These are all reflecting light. It uh, looks like aluminum foil reflection, right? A metallic reflection. Well, that's what it is, a metallic luster. Uh, very shiny. <coughs> uh, and that, of course, is due to uh, how the atoms are arranged. And then there's uh, these lusters, which aren't metallic, but still could be a little shiny, right? So this is a glassy luster. That's a pearly luster. Um, that's kind of more dull. So you have different uh, lusters there. They go under the name non-metallic, but they can be glassy, glossy, greasy, waxy, pearly, or earthy. Uh, either way, they're all non-metallic, right? They don't reflect like aluminum foil. Okay. Then, of course, you have streak. Kind of a funny name there, right? Streaking. Uh, the true color of a mineral uh, because it's on the inside. It's not some kind of uh, random color on the outside. But you actually take the mineral, rub it on a porcelain plate, and you get that internal powder. Uh, that internal powder is called a streak color, and that you can look up on a chart to help identify it. You'll notice these two minerals are the same mineral. They have different outside colors, but the same inside color. All right. Uh, I know what you're thinking. No, that is not someone's uh, nasty, dirty underwear. That is a streak plate that uh, after you rub the mineral on it, it leaves that powder behind. All right. Look at pyrite. You can see it's gold on the outside, but it has more of a black streak. Whereas if this were real gold and you streaked it, it would be a gold streak. Okay. Very good way to identify minerals. Then there's the hardness test. Uh, hardness is the uh, resistance to being scratched, and of course the harder something is, uh, the less likely it will be scratched, and of course the easier it can scratch other things. Well, take a look. Uh, here we have a piece of uh, uh, what looks like a piece of quartz on a glass plate, easily scratching it, so it must be harder than the glass. Glass has a hardness of about 5.5, so this must be 5.5 or harder. However, this one, when rubbed on the glass, does not scratch, so it must be softer than 5.5, right? And it gives you a range of hardness values, and that you can take to a chart and identify the mineral. Here you have a fingernail. Well, if you're a healthy non-smoker, your nails have a hardness of about 2.5, and you can use that to help identify the softer minerals, all right? 
If you can scratch that mineral, it must be either as hard or softer than your nail. Okay, and here's Moe's hardness scale uh, going 1 to 10, right? Of course, 10 is the diamonds, the hardest natural substance on earth that we know of. And the softest thing is talc. And that, of course, is uh, often put in like baby powder when you do a diaper change because it's softer than human skin, so the baby doesn't get the, that diaper rash. Uh, they call it talcum powder. Some babies have allergies to it. But anyway, it's a super, super soft mineral that when the baby's butt cheeks are you know, rubbing together when he's crawling all over the place, uh, it doesn't get that diaper rash. Anyway, work up the line. There's your fingernail, 2-5. Copper penny, if you have a copper penny, right? They don't use cop much copper in pennies anymore. Uh, but if it was pure copper, it would be a 3.5. An iron nail, right? A 4.5. There's your 5.5 glass, etc. And you keep going. And you can narrow down the range of hardness values to help identify that mineral. Okay. Moe's hardness scale. There it is. Glass of 5.5. And just jot down your notes right there. Okay, all right. How do you determine if a mineral has cleavage? That's how it breaks. If you drop a glass bottle on the floor, it shatters. They call that fracture. But some minerals break in a very organized fashion on these nice flat surfaces. That's called cleavage, like a meat cleaver. If you've ever seen a butcher, you know, uh, chop off a piece of steak using a cleaver, it's a nice clean cut and it leaves this flat chop. That's what that is, right? It's called cleavage. When a mineral breaks along flat, smooth surfaces, and that, of course, again, is due to the internal arrangement of atoms that we spoke about yesterday. Uh, different minerals cleave in different directions, um, but you can see here they all have that kind of flat surface once broken, and that's indicative of uh, cleaving, okay? The opposite of cleaving, of course, is fracture, and if you look here, these don't have that nice flat surface. They break unevenly like glass, um, and again, that's not following an atomic arrangement. It's uh, more disorganized. Okay. Okay. Then there's specific gravity, uh, similar to density, where every mineral will have a pretty unique density. And that also can help identify it. Uh, I don't know if you know how the story goes, but to, to find the density of irregular shaped objects, you can't use a ruler, right? You can't go length times width times height to get the volume. Uh, and then put it on a, a balance to get the mass. Uh, sometimes you have to put it in water, the displacement method, right? And the amount of water that rises up is the volume of the object. Well, the, uh, the gentleman that figured that out is, uh, was a Greek mathematician named Archimedes. And maybe you heard the story, but uh, he just couldn't figure out how to find the volume of irregular objects until he was getting in his bathtub one night. And as you get in the bathtub, the water rises up, right? Started to spill out. And he said, oh, my goodness, Eureka, Eureka. I figured it out. Uh, and that's, of course, uh, how the story goes. But you can use displacement method to figure out the volume of the object. Use a balance to get the mass. And, of course, density equals mass divided by volume. And once you find the density, in this case, specific gravity, uh, you can look that up on a chart. And also, it will help you identify it. Okay, all of these properties, again, are due to the arrangement of atoms, the internal arrangement of atoms. There's also chemical properties. Some minerals react to acids. Uh, calcite, for example, uh, is what makes up limestone. If you put hydrochloric acid on it, it will bubble and fizz. Not all minerals will do that. Another one, dolomite, uh, will react, but a little slower. So the actual rate of the reaction can help you figure out what that mineral is as well. Okay. Um, physical properties. So there's your review, right? Put them down there. Luster, hardness, cleavage, streak, density, color. Again, these are all due to the physical arrangement of those atoms, and that will result in what test result they give. Okay? Other useful tests. Uh, pretty cool stuff, but they're specific to only a few minerals, so we don't, uh, you know, do these that often. Double reflect refraction, right? You can see the double word there. Kind of bends light twice. Some minerals will taste salty, halite, although in lab we're not going to be tasting minerals uh, unless it is a freshly broken piece that nobody else has handled. Uh, some are very smelly, right? Rotten eggs, right? Sulfur. Some will uh, iridesce, give you kind of that cool glow under uh, black light situations. 
All right, fluorescence, another uh, example of that. And of course, magnetism. Some are naturally magnetic, uh, and you can do a quick little paperclip attraction test for that. Okay, here's the mineral chart that's in the back of your reference tables, very well organized. The first test you're going to do is to look at its luster to see how it reflects light. The second test is going to be the hardness test. Uh, and you can see right here the range of hardnesses, right? So you'll either use the glass plate, uh, the penny, the fingernail, right, to get your numbers. Uh, then you can look closely at it. You can see the cleavage or fracture, right, how it breaks. And again, that's looking at a freshly broken sample. Then comes the color. Notice the color test came after you've done three or four tests already, so you don't get misled. And then there are distinguishing characteristics, things unique to that mineral that kind of help you identify it as well. Other cool parts of the chart, what the minerals are used for, what the minerals are made up of, and of course the name of the mineral after you've uh, identified it. Okay, so pretty cool stuff. All right, so you guys have some summary questions to crank on. Uh, do your best, and we'll chat about it in the meet.